Hi. Um, imagine you've got a problem you want to solve. Um, the, the problem we're going to take in this case is that I've got a list of numbers um, and uh, they're not in the right, they're not in order, they're not, they're not um, ordered at all. Um, and you, I want to sort them from smallest to largest. So they're, they're in some random order at the moment and I want to order them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, now I'm trying to think about which approach that I might choose that I, sh I should take to sorting those, sorting those numbers. And I, I want to choose the one that's going to be the most efficient. Uh, and we'll talk about what efficiency means uh, in a second. So my problem is I want to sort some numbers. And uh, I want to know which approach or which algorithm that I could use to sort in those numbers would be the most efficient. two different approaches that I might take um, and compare them to find which is the most efficient um, and thus understand how to sort of think about algorithmic uh, efficiency. So the first uh, approach that I'm going to, I'm going to describe is called selection sort. So let me show you how that works. Got, I've got some numbers. Um, I start at the first number and I say, well, um, I want to find uh, the number that is smallest, uh, including this one, um, all the way through the whole list. Okay, so now, now to do that, I have to walk through the list. Now, I'm going to say that each step through the list takes a sort of, sort of step of time, if, if you like. Um, so I have to go, um, well, eight is the smallest I've found so far. Now seven is the smallest. Now six is the smallest. Now five is the smallest. Now step four is the smallest, step now three is the smallest, step now two is the smallest, and then step now one is the smallest. One is the smallest one I found, found through the whole list, and so I just swap the one I started with and, and the smallest one I found. Okay, so I did have eight and one, and now I've got one and eight. Then I just move to the next number in the list, and I do the same again, but I only look from here to the right. I don't, I don't look backwards, okay? So seven is the smallest, step six is the smallest, step five is the smallest, step four is the smallest, step three is the smallest, step two is the smallest, step two is the smallest. I still have to look at this one because I don't know if it's actually smaller than two. So two, two is the smallest I found, so I, I swap those two round. Now here, uh, I, I start from the, from the next one along again. Uh, so six is the smallest, step five is the smallest, step four is the smallest, Step three is the smallest, step three is the smallest, step three is the smallest. So these two, swap them around. Uh, now, uh, uh, step five is the smallest, step four 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 is the smallest. So four is the smallest one I found, swap those two. Now I'm on five, step five is the smallest, 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 so five, just, I just swap it with itself, like that. Now six, step six is the smallest, step six is the smallest, step six is the smallest, so swap six with itself, then seven, step seven is the smallest, step seven is the smallest, seven with itself, and then finally, step eight is the smallest, swap eight with itself, and I've got the numbers sorted. Now, what we're going to talk about is, is, is this idea of sort of steps, uh, being related to the how long a, a particular run of an algorithm takes to do. So we're going to say that roughly speaking, um, steps are roughly equal, the number of steps are roughly equal to um, execution time for one specific set of inputs. So what we discovered is that it took a certain number of steps to sort eight numbers, and, and specifically eight numbers. Now let, let's, let's try and think about what steps we were doing there. Um, we had to go 
uh, through the whole list the first time, then through everything but the first item the second time, then everything but the first two items the third time, and then everything but the first three items the, 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 the fourth time, and so on. So each time we had to go through one fewer item. So for this one we had to go through eight, this one through seven, through six, five, four, three, two, and then just one. So we could kind of, that was the number of steps we had to do, the number of numbers we had to look at. Um, so we could kind of draw that, uh, uh, maybe. So this is the number I'm on right now, so as, as the circle, and then the dot is doing a step. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that first go through the whole list. Then remember I started on two, so I have to do one fewer. Two, three, four, five, six, only seven that time. Then when I was on three, I could just do one fewer again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then five, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then just one. Now if I counted up the number of steps in, the, in that sort of triangle shape, I'd, I'd come up with 36, uh, which kind of does give us a sort of rough approximation of, of how long the selection sort algorithm is going to take to sort eight numbers, uh, which is which is useful information. It's pretty cool. Um, but what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is actually I'm going to say we're not gonna say it's 36. We're gonna say it's 64. And the reason for that is because if we draw a square around this, then we might notice that the side of that square is eight steps in that direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and the, 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 the length of this side is, is also 8, uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, now, I'll talk about a bit later about why I'm going to take 64 as the number of steps rather than 36. Um, but let's, let's look at what's going on here. Let's imagine that instead of sorting 8 numbers, we had to sort 9 numbers. Uh, we, could, we could just sort of kind of, you know, without too much of our brain switched on, we could just say like, well, I think it's just going to be something that looks like that. So what's happened? Well, it's grown by one in that direction, and it's grown by one in that direction. So we're ending up with nine and nine there. So we could actually sort of see that this is a pattern, and we could do a few more if we wanted to, but uh, we're probably not going to bother. Um, we could see that this is a pattern, and that to figure out the, the rough approximation of the number of steps, we just do length of the input, so that's eight in this case, uh, with these eight numbers, times length of the input. So I'm going to make a, a simple formula that tells us how many steps it will take to sort any number of items. Okay, so length times length. selection sort. Now let's, let's, let's think about that for a second. Um, I'm going to draw a graph here. Um, and I'm going to put on this axis, I'm going to put uh, the length of the input. And on this axis, I'm going to put the number of steps. Now we know already that um, we've decided that we're going to use this formula to calculate the number of steps. So for uh, eight numbers, then we're, we've decided it's going to take 64 steps. So we could actually plot that on this, on this graph here. Let me just fill in some numbers. So we've got, we're going to start from zero up to 32. I'll just plug in the tens there. So 10, 20, and 32. And then number of steps we're going to our range is going to be up to 256. Um, and so let me just plug in the hundreds. So we're just kind of eyeballing it. Um, looks okay. Okay, so 0 to 100, and then 100 to 200, and then two, up to 256 there. Okay, so, and this is number of steps. And this is length. Okay. Now we've already got something we can plot here because we decided that um, uh, 8 times 8 would be 64 steps 
to sort this with our, with our rough approximation. So let's plot that. So we've got 8 length goes to 64. Let's plot, plot it about there. Cool, so that's our first plot. Now we can use our formula to derive some other points we can plot on this graph. So I'm going to start with 2. <clears throat> so 2 times 2, length times length is equal to 4. So we're way down here now, which is 4, it's hardly off the bottom. There we go. So it'll take four steps to, to sort a, 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 a list of length 2. Um, now let's do, uh, let's say, 4 times 4. So this length of 4, so four numbers, uh, is 16. That's maybe there. Uh, and then we'll do one final one, we'll do 16 times 16. So 16 numbers give, means 16 times 16 steps, which is 256. So let me finally plot that and put it about there. Now, we've used our formula to derive these, but we can also see, roughly speaking, the line that's being described, and it's pretty steep. Now, we said that steps, number of steps, is roughly equal to the execution time for a particular run of an algorithm. Um, but we could then say that the efficiency of an algorithm is the same as the input, as the step growth as input growth. So let me just write that down. So efficiency is roughly equal to step growth as input grows. And this is the core takeaway from this whole thing. Okay. Now, what is, what is the step growth? Well, the step growth is plotted right here. The step growth is the slope of that line, and we can see that it accelerates. That's the crucial idea. It starts off quite slow, increasing quite slowly, but then it just really starts increasing. And this, is, this looks straight, but it's not. It's like, it's like curving up, and it will become what seems like vertical very, very, very rapidly. Um, so let's think about what's going on there. Well, for the first eight items, then we only needed 64 steps, okay? So that's eight items took us to there. The next eight items, so we only added eight more items, or rather doubled the number of items to 64, sorry, to double the number of items to 16, and look how much it's grown. So eight, 16, eight, 16, that's four times. Um, so the, which is to say, another way we can think about this is the first eight are really not too bad, but the second eight are like a nightmare. Okay, so this is a really, really inefficient algorithm. It, as, as your input increases, um, uh, it gets, uh, the number of steps gets much, much, much worse, very, very rapidly. Um, and that's what we care about. We care about the long term. We care about the really large inputs. We don't care so much about the small inputs because it just won't take very long. What we care about is, well, when, when we've got a million items, how long will this take? Not when we've got five items. Um, and so that's why we care about the growth of this line, because we want to think about well, what's it going to be like when we're you know, in the next room in terms of number of input uh, items. Okay. Now, we found out this is the sort of rough efficiency of, of, of selections, and it's not that efficient. Um, I asked you to just sort of accept um, that we, instead of taking 36 steps, you know, which is pretty, pretty fuzzy already as an idea, um, then, as, then instead of taking 36 steps for, for an input length of 8, then let's do 64 instead. Now, now why, did, why is it okay to be that loosey-goosey uh, with, with our number of steps? Well, let's, let's have a think about it. Let, let's imagine that... Um, which we try to be a bit more accurate with this algorithm, that we say, well, let's do um, length times length roughly divided by two. It's not, it's not quite, but, but this get, definitely gets us closer to the actual number of steps that our algorithm takes. Um, and uh, let's say that we do that. So, so, so th th uh, this eight would be about down here. Um, this 16 would be 256 divided by two, so it would be about there. So th th which is to say that the slope, it would be much less steep. So it seems like we're missing information, or we're losing information, by not having that divide by two there. But, but why, why do we not care about that? Well, 
Let's, let's instead of imagining that it's divided by two, let's just imagine that we come up with a brilliant algorithm, not selection sort, some other magic algorithm that doesn't exist, that instead of divided by two, for some reason we can divide it by a million. Okay? So we do length times length divided by a million. Well, which is yeah, conceivable, possibly. Um, these, all, all four of these numbers would be like absolutely flat lines because you know, uh, 16 times 16 for, for this one uh, would be 16 times 16, which is 256, divided by a million, which is like a, a tiny, tiny fraction of one. So it would be way down here. So it seems like that divided by two, though maybe not quite on the same scale, we are genuinely losing information. But now, instead of doing, imagining eight items, let's imagine that we're sorting 10,000 items. Actually, let's imagine we're sorting 100,000 items. So our formula would give us 100,000 times 100,000 divided by a million. Now, what do we end up with there? Well, we can just cross off these O's. So we end up with uh, 10,000 here. Now that's not nearly so small. 10,000 is, is, is way, way, way up in the sky. Um, which is to say that a million was very significant when the, when the length, length of numbers was, was, was quite low. But it became increasingly less significant. And if we go to, instead of 100,000 items, we go to a, a million items or a billion items, that divide by a million is going to be peanuts in comparison to the, 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 the damage that's done by that um, you know, uh, length times length. And so that's why we don't care about these numbers, because in the long run, when you get to the really, really large input lengths, then they will be really, really insignificant. And remember, that's what we care about. We care about the really bad cases where we have to sort a million numbers, not where we have to sort just eight or something like that. So, so that's why we, why we don't care about getting into the nitty-gritty of exactly how many steps it is when it's just going to be divided by, by this constant amount. Cool, okay, great. So, so we've got one algorithm up now. We've got selection sort. It doesn't look great. Let's look at a second algorithm so we can compare and contrast. We're going to look at merge sort. Now, how does merge sort work? Well, it's got two stages. We've got one list, oh let me just disorder these items super quick. Cool. So we've got that disordered list again. We've got two stages for merge sort. Our first stage is we've got one list of eight numbers. We want to get it down to eight lists of one number, which or to be more precise or to be more general, I guess. Um, we want to get it down to just all lists of one number. Okay? So however long our input length is, that would, that would depend on the number of lists, that would affect the number of lists we ended up with. But we're going to end up with eight in this case. So how do we do that? Well, we can just say uh, that we find the midpoint of the list, and then just say, right, that, one, that lot is in the first list, and that lot is in the second list. So, so I say midpoint, and then I say, right, well now I've got a list of eight, seven, six, and five, and now I've got a list of four, three, two, and one. And just do the same again. So I'm just dividing these lists up into two each time. Okay, so I end up with eight and seven in its own list, and then six and five in its own list, and then four and three in its own list, and two and one in its own list. And then one more layer, eight goes on its own and seven on its own, then six and five each on their own, four on its own, three on its own, two on its own, and one on its own. So I've done the dividing. Now I'm getting everyone, the goal is, Every, every number on its own in, in its own list. How many steps does that take? Well, roughly speaking, we can just kind of eyeball it. Kind of finding the midpoint is a step, right? So we had one step, two step, three step, four step, five step, six step, seven steps. I'll save us some time by saying that that first stage always takes, roughly speaking, um, uh, the, 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 the number of steps is equal to the length of the input. So to get to this point, it took us we'll say eight steps. It's actually seven, but, but we're not going to be too uh, detailed about it. So remember, one step for each split. 
So that was eight steps to get to this point. Now, stage two. If we look at this list, this list of eight, which just has an eight and only one item, we can see that we know it's sorted because it's only got one item in it. A, a, a list with one item in it, by definition, is sorted. Um, so if we pair up these two lists together, both of which are sorted, and then we just say, well, let me take the smallest one in either list and pop it in a new list, and then do the same again, smallest one in either one. Remember here we've got eight against, um, we can see that eight is not compared to anything, so we just default choose eight. We end up with a sorted list with two items in it. So we had two sorted lists with one item each, each in. Now we've got one sorted list with two items in. We can do the same thing again. So six and five, which is the smallest, it's five. Uh, six and no, no entry, uh, it's six. Then four and three, which is the smallest, well that gives us uh, three. And then four, uh, four and nothing gives us four. Uh, and then we do two and one, which is the smallest, well it's got one. And then two and nothing, which is the smallest, gives us two. Now we do that same thing again. But this time the lists are bigger, but it doesn't matter, the algorithm still works. So we start at the beginning of both lists, and we say, well, five and seven, which is smaller? Let's go with five. Uh, now uh, six and seven, which is smaller? Let's go with six. Now seven, nothing, it's seven is the smallest, and eight and nothing, eight is the smallest. Now we've got three and one, which is the smallest? It's one. Uh, three and two, it's two. Three and nothing, it's three. Four and nothing, it's four. One final layer. Five and one, it's one. Five and two, it's two. Five and three, it's three. Five and four, it's four. Five and nothing, it's five. Six and nothing, it's six. Seven and nothing, it's seven. Eight and nothing, it's eight. And the list is sorted. Now, we said it took us eight steps, roughly, to get us up to here. How many steps did that take? Well, <clears throat> let's say that um, each time we have to move a number into, an, into the new list, that's one step. So the first time we'll say, okay, well, five had to go in, oh, sorry, let's start here. So seven had to go in and eight had to go in. So, so that was two steps to get us to there. And then six had to go in and five had to go in. So that was two steps to get us to there. And then uh, uh, four had to go in and then three had to go in, two steps there. And you can see that's gonna be two steps there. All right, so it was eight steps for that layer. Get us to there. Now, what about here? Well, <clears throat> we had to do um, uh, uh, we had to do seven and five. Sorry, seven, five, eight, and six. So that's four steps. And then we had to do one, two, and three and four. So that's four more steps, which is eight total again. And then finally, to get through this lot, there's, we can see that there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps to get us down to here. So that's going to be eight steps there, so it's going to be eight there. So our rough number of steps, we can just total these, these, these eights here. So we've got eight times four eights, which is, which is 32. Um, so nice, nice, nice sort of handy result there. Um, so eight times four is 32. So for an input length of eight, we, we end up with 32 steps. Let's plot that. So we're here, 32 steps puts us about there maybe. So that's our first plot. Now, what's the formula? Remember we came up with a formula so that we could figure out um, without having to count all of the, all of the examples. Um, uh, 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 for any arbitrary length of input, how many steps we need to do. Um, well, what's the formula here? Well, we can definitely see it's, it's, it's length times something. Well, maybe, maybe we can see that. So, so it's gonna be uh, length times something, but what's really going on here? Let's say we've got our eight items here. We have to merge them into a new set of lists. So we ended up with, we took two items and merged them into one, two into one, two into one, two into one. Then we did the same thing again. So we're just kind of reproducing this in a, in a slightly more abstract form. So these two, eight and seven, we're here. Six and five, we're here, and, and so on. 
Um, well, we merged again, and then we did one final merge to get down to here. So, so what's going on here? Well, it kind of looks like the number of eights we've got is equal to sort of roughly half the length of the, uh, uh, sorry, half the height of this of this tree structure, um, and that's true. Um, so. If we know how high this tree is going to be, then we can come up with a rough formula. Okay. Now let's look at what's going on here. Well, we start off with eight items. They went down to four. Sorry, eight lists. Then down to four lists. Then down to two lists, and then down to one. And it seems like once you get down to just a just a single list, you're done. So if we know how many layers there are on that tree, how many times you have to divide by two, then we can figure out how high that tree is going to be and therefore how, how many steps we're going to end up with. Because remember, it's eight steps for each layer, so how many layers are there? Well, we can see divide by two. So eight, four, two, one. That was four, right? So, so that, that makes sense. What about if we have four items? Well, we can actually see it drawn right here. One, two, three, four. So four, two, one, three. OK, interesting. Um, then if we had two items, so we can see it right here. So we've got two down to one. Boom. Two, we're there. Uh, and then what about 16 items? Well, we could just kind of add a layer on top here. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. So it's only one more layer to double the number of items. And, and there we've got a sort of formula. So um, we can say that here's 4. So uh, the number of layers for 2, we decided was just going to be 1, 2. So that's 2. Remember, it's going to be um, length times that. Let's actually write out the formula. So our formula is going to be uh, length times number of times half to divide length by two to get to one plus one. So, we already know that for uh, eight items, that's, that's four times. Um, what, about, uh, what about, let's say, uh, just, uh, we'll just start with two items. So we had two down to one, so that's two layers. So two times two is four, which puts us here. Exactly the same place as, 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 as selection sort. Um, then we'll do uh, four. So four, two, one, that's three. So four times three is 12. Just down here, maybe. Uh, then we'll, we've already done eight, so we'll do 16. So 16, we decided we had to sort of go up to here. So that's one, two, three, four, five layers. So 16 times five is 80. And then 32, finally. So we can see the pattern that it's just got one more layer. So it's, it's going to be 16 times six, uh, which is 192 for 30, sorry. Um, uh, 32 times 6, uh, which is uh, 192, so that's 32 items, puts us at 192 there, let's say. And we can draw that line, of course. Now, just right away, intuitively, we can see which algorithm is more efficient. It's clearly merged short. This line is much, much flatter. So we, if we were to choose out of these two algorithms, which one to, which one to do? We choose merge shot because it just grows so much more slowly. Um, now, what's super fun is that all of these ideas, we were just doing kind of sorting numbers by hand, and all of these ideas translate directly um, over to writing code, uh, writing algorithms in code rather than writing them in instructions for, for a person to enact. Um, if you want to learn um, more about more about that, these, these ideas, um, though you could probably apply these ideas, just these ideas, to your code already. If you want to learn more about that, there are certain formalisms um, that, and fields that you can learn more about. So the first field is algorithmic complexity. And the other thing you might want to research is um, asymptotic notation.
Thanks very much for watching.